I'm going to say hi this time because you get to say hi all the time first, Bonnie. Oh, yeah, because you're trying to throw me a bone because you do the bulk of the work a lot of time. (laughs) Because people just love to hear me prattle on. Welcome to Deconversion Therapy. Um, It's good to have you. We're so happy to see you. We're so happy to hear you. No, you're happy to hear us. We're so happy you hear. Yeah, we're not. We don't know. But if you're happy to hear us, please rate and review us. Um, You have to do that on Apple Podcasts. Someone asked the other day. So you bring up Apple Podcasts. And I guess if you have an Android, maybe you can do it on the Internet. I don't know. Anywho, you bring it up. Wow, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, (laughs) You bring it up, and then you see all of our uh, fantastic award-winning episodes, and you keep scrolling down and down and down until you see ratings and reviews, and it says write a review. So we got one the other day, and it said the— The subject line was such a joy, which is so sweet, because that's such a Jesus others yourself. That's what they're saying to us. And it says, I love Bonnie and Karen. This podcast helps so much um, to relieve my post-traumatic church syndrome. It's nice to laugh at the absurdity of organized religion and its terrible leaders. So we could, we could, is that a thing? PTCS? Sure. I don't know. If it's not, I call Patton. (laughs) I call Patton Oswald, too. (laughs) Done. (laughs) Done. You know what amazes me sometimes is when I look at the Apple page for our podcast, my God, we have content. We have so much (laughs) content. It's bizarre. (laughs) (laughs) But I, I really do. I said it before a few weeks ago, but on the edge of becoming a more normal society... It was such a nice thing that we didn't really maybe appreciate while we were in it that I had every week to look forward to getting together with you with a purpose. Yeah. To talk about things. Uh, Same. Because, I mean, we usually always laugh. So that's like good. And yeah, it's kept me totally sane and insane at the same time, like making sure I do all our social media, which I forget. But you can find us on Twitter. We do Instagram daily. Um, TikTok has started building up. I really love Instagram. I know that that is like late to the program, but (laughs) I didn't really look at it but so much. And some of my favorite people just put so much good stuff on Instagram. And you always get a picture. That's it. And, I mean, we just really repost memes from (laughs) the great people that are in our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group that's secret. So you just look up groups and then deconversion therapy and answer the questions, um, which are very simple. Although some people just don't answer them. And I'm like, one, that's rude and you're weird and I'm scared (laughs) of you, so I'm not letting you in. But, yeah, people post really funny things in there. I steal them, and then I put them on Instagram, and either people like them or don't, and I just want to say, do you think I made this But ultimately, with social media, you want want reposts, so you're doing them a favor. Exactly. I mean, yeah. yeah. No, but... uh, Hey, so in case you guys didn't know, you can change your background for Zoom calls, because Karen and I look at each other, so she put a background up with me as a child sitting in my grandfather's chair with my shoes off, so I'm looking, I'm... (laughs) I'm looking at her, but I keep focusing on my toes <laughs> as a child. And I suppose one was aiming at a different <laughs> angle because it looks like my second and third toe are huge compared to the big toe. <laughs> and that's not true. And anyway, you have to so say thanks for that, Karen. You, you have to say what you're holding, though. Oh, I think we've shown this before. I'm holding a magazine with a picture of... <laughs> Arthur Fonzarelli from TV's Happy Days, but without his hair, you know, greased back. So Henry Winkler, you know, in jeans and a T-shirt and his feathered hair. (laughs) (laughs) And I I think we put this up in um, 
in our newsletter. And we've got a sponsorship newsletter. Go to Deconversion Therapy Podcast. And we put, like, different pictures of us and personal things. And um, as you heard last episode, we give away an Illuminato candle every month. But, yeah, this picture is hilarious. I don't know because there's another picture. And it's me sitting in the chair. (laughs) Holding the magazine. (laughs) Holding the magazine like a proof of life. And I'm trying to think through. And I am not smiling either. But my, I, I, you can tell I'm bad at not smiling because I was probably laughing at nothing. No, Um, because someone was probably behind you, me, going, (laughs) don't smile. (laughs) But what was our reasoning? I have no idea. I'm Uh, sure we were like, if we send this to them. Right. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But But you know what? Uh, Given the lack of immediate photos that come out about TV shows back in the day. Mm -hmm. This was the first time we saw Henry Winkler, not as the Fonz. Right. I'm sure it was like... It it was jarring. Yeah, it was. And when I saw him on Arrested Development as an adult, (gasps) I was... Oh, so funny. He's hilarious, but the whole idea of him being so much shorter than I thought he was in real life. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't look short in this picture. He looks super handsome in this picture. Not that he's not super handsome as the Fonz. Right. And not that short people aren't super handsome. And there we go. But I just remember feeling a certain way about this photo. (laughs) And I think that that's why I have the scowly look on my face. Like, God damn it. Why do you guys have to come and ruin everything? I was was having a little crush on Fonzie and you had to take a freaking picture of it. Thanks. I, I don't follow that logic, but I. Why would they take a picture of a, like a crush that you have of you having a crush on Fonzie? They didn't need a picture of that embarrassing moment in my life. I took that picture, and you took the picture of me. No, yes. my grandmother took it of both of us. No, no, oh, we okay. we <laughs> had somehow borrowed the camera in some way, or at least made your grandmother do it, and I don't know why. We did a lot of weird stuff. But you know what? You were the one that brought secularism into my life. (laughs) Because you watched these different TV shows or you had these different crushes, different things like that I didn't have around my house as much. Now, my parents weren't like, you can't listen to secular music. They weren't anything like that, but you were the one that would be like, have you heard this, you know, um, what's his name? Have you heard the Selton John song? Or don't you love this? And Uh I'd be like, what is this? And then I'd listen to it. Like you brought in, uh, you were the devil. I feel like you would have naturally lied and said yes first and then run home and waited to hear it on the radio. Possibly. (laughs) And And then choreographed in my room with my dog a ballet dance to it, which I did very often. And let me just describe my room to people. So my parents had this really cool house in Florida, like old Florida house. But it was very interesting the way it was built. It was built by a plumber, so it had five bathrooms. One we just used as a closet because, I mean, my God. But My brother's room was like this big room. It had a sink. My room had a sink in the closet. So weird. (laughs) But my brother had this big room. And then at the very end, there is what people after us used as a utility room (laughs) to store like a ladder and an extra chair. That was my whole bedroom. (laughs) So it was just wide enough from left to right to fit your bed, a little twin bed. Right. And then for some reason, I had like a lot of furniture. So there was a desk and then there was a dresser with like high bookshelves on it. Mm -hmm. And I just remember one time something, I don't know, I probably pulled out a drawer, stepped on the drawer to reach something on that bookshelf And the whole thing (laughs) fell on me, and I was just flattened like the roadrunner under the furniture. 
yelling. Flat and Stanley. St- yeah. And then we mailed you off to go on vacations. <laughs> but my brother came in and just uh, laughed. So that's fun. Nice. Yep. Yep. Nice. I was thinking of those days. Do you remember <laughs> Bugaloos? Yeah. The, the toy. The Bugaloos. They're in the air and everywhere, flying high, feeling free. See, you're so secular. Um, no, know. there was there was an actual thing that you would buy, and they were called bugaloos also. And hmm. what they were, now that I know, they're just the inside inflatable part of a tire. So it, oh, okay. it would be as big as a hula hoop, but it would be flaccid. An inner tube? Yes. Yes, and you would <laughs> okay. hook it up, like, on a tree like you would a swing, mm-hmm. and then you would sit in it, and if you rolled your butt the right way, you would just roll in and out of and this. It, would, it seems like it would hurt. <laughs> it, it didn't feel great, but you could sit on it, and then you'd bounce up and down, like, you know, shoot off the ground, and I just remember... The whole setup one time, my brother had a very attractive friend. Let's put it that way. And the friend, for some reason, was spending the night in our guest room. I don't know what was going on or who knows. He was spending the night there. What was the guest room? Oh, it wasn't. It was the game room, but it had a couch. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was like, is there a room I'm not remembering? (laughs) So I'm in the backyard. We had a dog that um, didn't like men. And I'm in the backyard, and I'm bouncing on that bugaloo thing by myself (laughs) with my witchy hair because there was no product in the day, and there needs to be some tears for that. And I'm bouncing by myself. Then I slide off the bugaloo thing because, you know, it's rubber, so it just goes and then slides off my butt, bounces up in the back of me, grabs my witchy hair, and it's rubber, and just spins it like a curler, except I am now off the ground by my hair. And I'm screaming, and out Aww. comes the cute boy, and he's put on a robe, Aww. so I don't know. A who, robe? I know. What teenage boy brings a robe? But anyway, he comes out. I'm like, where's my family? No. The good-looking guy comes out in a robe, and my dog is barking and won't let him near me to rescue me. I'm hanging by my hair, like seriously <laughs> tangled. Um and uh, anyway, that was a meet cute. Later, <laughs> me and awesome. the dog got married. Well, your brother's five years older, too. So that was like the super, you know, definition of embarrassing older cute guy age difference. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just um, that's humiliated <laughs> by swinging on an inner tube <laughs> by by my hair, which is out of control. Oh, I know. that's awesome. I just need to share that. That was that's my letter, my embarrassing letter. So, I'm I'm putting in there because I'm sure I prayed. Nothing to do with church in it. That's great. I'm sure I prayed. So there you yeah, go. I'm sure, I'm sure I, I said, "Oh bouncing. my God!" <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is our letter. So, uh, do you have anything fun to say before we get into it? I do. Do. You? Okay, so last night, who we talked about a couple of weeks ago, Lil Nas X was the musical guest on Saturday Night Live. And I'm assuming by your face you didn't watch it. <laughs> I did I not. Did. I, I, I'll watch the bits on YouTube later. That's how I do right. it. So immediately after the show was over, there were things on Twitter that he posted indicating that he ripped his pants in the middle of singing (laughs) his first number. Did he do, like, a split? (laughs) Well, here's the thing, though. If you're just, you know, a white lady watching like me, the whole time you notice 
He's touching his inner, he's touching his crotch a lot to start with, you know, that whole Michael Jackson move. Correct. I'm like, he's touching his crotch a lot. He's touching his crotch a lot. And then he just kept his hand over his crotch and just wouldn't move it. And it was like it was glued in place (laughs) after he went back to the pole to do his pole dance. (laughs) And I didn't know, well, is this just, uh, you know, the, the trajectory of crotch grabbing and how it happens? Touch, touch, touch. And then you can't let it go. It's evolving um, into like reenacting <laughs> a fig leaf. Yeah. So um, apparently then he tweeted out, oh, my God, I can't believe it. My my pants broke <laughs> and I wanted to do my pole dance, but I couldn't. <laughs> So, um, and when I look at it again, I'm like, I guess that's where, you know, in the musical number his pants broke. I don't know. Mm. And mm-hmm. I, I kept looking closer, like, is he what holding do I something? See? <laughs> I know. What's, what's happening? Is there a rip there? Uh, I don't think anybody would have known because there was just a lot of crotch touching <laughs> to start with. And, um... I'm sure people are going to be mad after that number, too. They have never seen any man-on-man action like this Ooh. on broadcast television. I Ooh. I can't wait to see the preachers all going crazy, and then you're like, why were you watching it? Why did you watch it? Why are you spending so much time? That's what I was thinking the other day. I keep coming across people on TikTok, Christians going, okay— you know, the devil's after you, or this is how to, you know, make sure Satan doesn't enter you through witchcraft and this and so <laughs> forth and so on. In fact, I saw some videos where people would be like, okay, look at this, and it might be what they think is an apparition or a ghost. And all the comments will be, Lord God, protect all of us from what we might see. <laughs> I'm like, why? Oh. I always want to be protected from what I might see. (laughs) Yeah. Gosh. But they're like, because Satan will enter you and the demons will (laughs) enter you if you see it. I'm like, why is the devil working so hard? Why can't Jesus show up a lot more? (laughs) Can't Jesus show up more? I have something to send you. I saw a face in a leaf (laughs) recently. And I want to see if you see a face in the leaf as well. And I can't find it quick enough, so I guess maybe frig. So this is our letter said where we read your funny church-related stories, and then we mock you. Um, you have two to read. I have one. So why don't you start? I'm gonna because I love the start of this because this person is in the same um, <laughs> age group, maybe as we are, roughly. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. This they're on a the, jazzy. Scooter. Oh my gosh! This person's story. It says okay to use their first name. So, it says their first name is Turk, which I love to start with. Yep. Okay. And they're married to someone called Caicos. <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> Just cake. <laughs> oh, so close. Uh, let's see. Okay. It was the first week of October 1983. I was an eight-year-old and was about to have my world turned upside down. (laughs) There was a movement brewing within the Christian faith, which we now call the Satanic Panic. Yes. I, among other many Christian kids, was being taught that there were many things which were secret ploys to get up to worship the goddamn devil. (laughs) Did you read this before you sent it to me? No, no. That's so funny. Well, I guess we do talk about the devil a lot. Anyway, um, Satan was using many means, avenues such as Hollywood, rock and roll, child care workers. Yes, that's what it was about. What? Um, to promote his kingdom yeah. and steal worship from Jesus. What, what do you mean? Like daycare workers? Yeah, that was what the satanic panic was about. We should do it sometime. But there were accusations that some child care workers were promoting witchcraft and the devil because, like, one kid came home and was like, my daycare worker's a witch. What did they do? Did you see Satan? Where Did they fly across the room, you know? And these kids started saying stuff. And anyway, 
it started. And, and then all it was is they said, did you like that Elton John song? <laughs> right. <laughs> it was God. Bonnie, some girl named Bonnie. <laughs> Um, but anyway, child care workers across the country were being accused of having underground satanic stuff and doing terrible things to kids, and they were arrested. I mean, lives were ruined. We'll cover it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah I'd like to. Okay, so let's see what this – let's see what Turk says. <laughs> okay, I'll, immediately I've seen a, a, a word I need to commandeer. There was a jerkwad who wrote an article for Jimmy Swaggart's magazine. Reverend Jimmy Swaggart actually had a magazine back before the hooker incident, which attempted to... It was called inf- Swaggy. <laughs> uh, so let's see. This article attempted to inform us, spiritual simpletons, how Saturday morning cartoons were trying to trick kids into worshiping the devil. That's right. That's right. This <laughs> this asshole started listing all sorts of cartoons which were leading us kids into darkness. Some of the cartoons mentioned were Smurfs, Rubik's the Wonderful Cube, <laughs> Dungeon Dungeons Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons. Maybe it's Dungeons. Okay, along with many other cartoons which I dearly loved, especially the Smurfs. Now, what made this article worse is this peckerhead <laughs> mentioned a bunch of my favorite toys, too. He taught that these toys were evil and could house demons within them. Yes, you heard that right. A toy could be demon-possessed. Uh-huh. <laughs> Naturally, this article caught the attention of our parents. I know which, let me tell you which toy was probably demon-possessed. The one that I had called Tiffany Taylor, where her scalp spun around. What? And she had blonde hair. Yeah. And then if you wanted her to have brown hair, you just spun her scalp <laughs> around. <laughs> and then she changed looks. I thought you were going to say that um, Teddy Rupskin, what's that bear? <laughs> I don't know. Rucks, Ruxpin? Ruxpin? Anyway, yeah. Yeah, all I all I ever wanted to do also was to just put a knife into Stretch Armstrong. Yes, because it like wouldn't go. Yeah, you just wanted to know what was inside so bad. <laughs> like, oh, I just gotta stab this guy. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's see. Naturally, this article caught the attention of our parents. They all got together and determined that we must rid ourselves of evil and have ourselves an old-fashioned burn service. Oh no. For those of you who do not know what a burn service is, it's when you have an outdoor service where the preacher yells at you, telling you what a lousy, (laughs) ignorant Christian you are for letting these demonic things into your life. (laughs) Then we would repent, gather up all the evil things, toys, books, music, etc. We had either willingly and or accidentally brought into our homes and throw them into a fire. What if Stretch Armstrong... Is I they know. put him and then the, he starts melting and then you would really have your answer. I just hope no child out there had their precious Charlie's Angels <laughs> Jill doll <laughs> thrown into the fire. <laughs> Oh, here he goes. In addition, we had also just learned that Halloween was a high holy day for Satanist witches, Smurfs, and the members of Motley Crue. (laughs) (laughs) Which reminds me, did I tell you, like, Vince Neil lives here. I told you guys about how we saw a car and we couldn't figure out the license plate. plate. Now, like, he's in our neighborhood all the time, so he must have moved here. And I'm going to, if I ever see him, boy, am I going to just um, throw him in a fire. <laughs> oh, okay. So then he says, trick-or-treating was now deemed as a form of devil worship. I hate you, Mike Warnke. <laughs> we were no longer allowed to do it. Our mothers decided that Halloween night would be the best night to hold this burn service. Ugh. We were going to take this night of demonic darkness and devil worship back for Jesus. We were going to worship Jesus by sacrificing our toys. Now, it was bad enough that I was no longer allowed to watch the Smurfs. Now I was being told I had to cast my stuffed brainy Smurf into the (laughs) fire. (laughs) I guess my parents were afraid that the demon that inhabited him would cause him to murder me in my sleep. Our church built this massive bonfire for the burn service. It was huge. It was beautiful. And it was a Smurf killer. (laughs) Crazy enough, I wasn't the only kid who loved the Smurfs. The Smurfs were a big deal back then. I'm just picturing blue smoke going up in the neighborhood. 
I think part of it is my general apathy toward the Smurfs <laughs> yeah. and realizing that this kid really loved the Smurfs. Oh, so sad. Sorry. Okay. He's written the word Smurfs so many times. What? Okay. <laughs> Take that out because I don't know if it's a he. <laughs> Okay. The Smurfs were a big deal back then. (laughs) It's so hard to believe. Um, And many of us dweebs had a stuffed Smurf. Despite our little pleas, our beloved Smurfs are about to be burnt alive. Our parents thought it would be better spiritual move if we little brats cast our own Smurfs into the fire. This is such <laughs> emotional torture. Now. Oh my god! Um, this even more. De- <laughs> this is even more depressing, and I began to cry. Oh. An adult told me, it's better that Brainy feel the flames than you to feel the eternal flames of hell. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hope that that old lady who said that is right now <laughs> with, like, some major incontinence. <laughs> Going, what could I have possibly done to live my life better? Anyway, they gathered up all of us sniffling dill weeds and created a circle around the fire. We were clutching our Smurfs tight, begging God to stop this Smurf genocide. (laughs) However, with the coaxing of our parents one by one, we began to cast our Smurfs into the fire and then run to the loving arms of our mother. Our mothers understood it would be a hard night on us. (laughs) Get the triaminic ready. (laughs) Here, have some some Tylenol PM. (laughs) Um, Therefore, they got the bright idea to roast hot dogs and marshmallows as a means for comfort. Uh Needless to say, it wasn't that comforting. We ended up just standing around the fire sniffling, unable to move as we roasted our hot dogs over the charred remains of our (laughs) beloved Smurfs. (laughs) Uh, just seeing Papa Smurf's eyes <laughs> being the last to melt, staring at you with guilt. <laughs> just blue smoke coming up. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for that. And it is traumatic. It is. And, and don't think that I'm being sarcastic, but like even small traumas like that influence you. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. Think how yes. violent, like, fire is in the first place. It's such a violent yeah. concept. Oh, man, we're it's fucked destruction. up. It's destruction. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, oh, my God. And, you know, like, these parents, too, now, if you bring it up, this is the kind of stuff where they would just blow off. Like, oh, I remember that. You were so upset. Yeah, that yeah. hot right. dog didn't help you. You're so sensitive. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That, uh, okay. So thanks for that. <laughs> okay, here's mine. This is from Linda. Years ago, while visiting family for Thanksgiving, my aunt made a big announcement. She'd been cured of her mental illness at a recent revival. Awesome. <laughs> quote, it's just that easy. <laughs> quote, it was amazing, she said. Quote, a true miracle. Okay, here we go again. I want someone to be cured of, you know, a missing Half leg. Half an arm. <laughs> right, right. It's always the Anything, same Anything, and then I want it filmed. All right, here we go. For the first time in years, she was off all her medications, oh dear, and felt like a new woman. <laughs> I bet she did. Oh, no. She I hope been... this isn't somebody going off of, like, Uh, the meds that you take for bipolar disorder. She had been misdiagnosed. She didn't have bipolar disorder. Uh, She had a demon inside her. You know, Carrie Fisher will tell you that's not true. (laughs) Or she did. Um, Okay. Uh, 
actually a few demons. The pastor at the revival recognized her condition and performed an exorcism right there at the revival. It turns out a number of attendees had demons, and he did a group exorcism because it saves money. Um, (laughs) Praise Jesus. (sighs) <sighs> Six oh. months later, she was back on her meds, and we haven't heard anything more about the demons. <laughs> I mean, this Does is... It, wait, wait, go back. Does it say how long ago it was and I wasn't paying attention? No, no. It just said years okay. ago. Years. But I okay. mean, this is still happening today, all the time. Like, yeah. you have a demon of this, you have a demon of that. And people go off their fucking meds, cancer meds, everything. Oh, my God. That's that I knew. Well, clearly I knew that was coming. I'm like, oh, no, because people on those kind of meds always think, let me stop taking these. And when when can we sue for that kind of thing? I don't know. Oh, you mean the church? Yeah. Or like a revival person, like this person convinced me. And now this has happened. All right. The prior year's Thanksgiving, my cousin made a big announcement about how (laughs) after watching an episode of Highway to Heaven, (laughs) he had felt the spirit call him to admit a big lie. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, no. That he Oh, no. I'm not going to even say out loud what I think this one is. You can after. But that he had faked his recent hospital stay. For Gillian Barre syndrome, and he hadn't been miraculously cured. But that's a story for another time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, When you, P.S. When you guys say that's a story for another time, because several of you say this in your letters, (laughs) the time is now. (laughs) The time is now. Oh my God. But that's what I love. Like, you know, one, people thinking they're cured of something, but two, faking a whole testimony so it sounds better. Wow. Wow. All right. Okay. I'm calm now. Let me let me tell you, there was a group of friends when I was in acting school and we were all hanging out one night and one of their roommates came home and his face was all beaten and bruised and bloodied and he said he got mugged and then somehow somebody casually months later go went and told me uh, that wasn't true he did it to himself <laughs> like you can't just drop that piece of information what? casually in conversation to me what did oh my god but what did what was he trying to get out of it was he attention like- not money. The end. Nope. Oh, oh, okay. All Attention. Right. Awesome. That's it. Yeah. Because that is who you run into in acting school. Right. In case you didn't know. I am acting. <laughs> if I can't be the best actor, they're going to pay attention to me if I beat myself up and say I got mugged. Oh, man. Because I went to a church service and they told me to get off my meds because I was a demon. Yeah. All right. Okay. Finish this up with your last letter. <sighs> I just, <laughs> that the whole obsession with Smurfs just is sticking <laughs> with me. And now I've got to put on mascara again. Okay, so let's see. Wah, wah, wah. It says, okay to use the first name on the podcast. Caitlin says, I grew up in a charismatic Pentecostal church in southeast Michigan. The it's end. a mega church with a sanctuary that can fit at least 800 people, and the church often gets a lot of publicity in the small town where it's located. I'm trying to think how many ours fit as some kind of comparison yeah. and base. It was Who knows? Big, but I how mean, many people were at your wedding? Was it 800? No, but <laughs> okay. that's the. F- The thing with if you're Pentecostal charismatic, you can fit less people because they're all waving their arms around. (laughs) So you have to leave room for dancing with the ribbon, the tambourine. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So uh, so Caitlin goes, when I was 11, my grandpa sawed off two of his fingers. (laughs) Sorry. We have a lot well, of issues in these people's letters. While working with a table saw. Oh, man. Gruesome, I know, but wild accidents like this happen to him all the time. Oh. 
Like the good Christian girl I was, I asked my Wednesday night girls group to pray for him. In true Pentecostal fashion, they had me sit in a chair while they surrounded me and put hands on me to pay for, to pray for my grandpa. Usually when you get a bunch of Pentecostals together for prayer, someone will get carried away and start shouting, speaking in tongues, or saying things that don't even make sense. Our group leader was notorious for all of these things. <laughs> At one point, she said, and one day he'll notice a finger is starting to grow back. Oh, my. Can you imagine <laughs> if just seeing that if on someone? If only. What, hey, I was so. <laughs> you just have no finger and then just this little what? tip starting to come out. Uh, a little bud. <laughs> right. With a tiny little fingernail. Uh-huh. I was so stunned that it totally took me out of the moment. Apparently, she must have thought my grandpa was a lizard. (laughs) (laughs) On a different night, she ambushed us and said, we're going to speak in tongues today. She laid down blankets on our freezing gym floor, and we prayed fervently for about two hours. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. What a drag. (laughs) Oh, God. Ugh. Two hours. My God, you could read a book. Anyway, um, we <laughs> That's prayed for the point. For- <laughs> They're trying to keep them away from that activity. <laughs> we prayed fervently for about two hours until something came out, although we were in a poorly insulated gym in January, <laughs> so we could have just been shivering. It sounds similar. The same lady was one person you could count on for theatrics during every single service. She would always be sitting near the front where everyone could see her at all times and would convulse in the spirit, run around our giant sanctuary in the spirit, and would probably fall over at some point. (laughs) My mom couldn't stand her. She was known (laughs) as Crazy Cheryl, and sometimes we would try to time how long it took her to start the theatrics. (laughs) It's great. I love that this podcast gives me the opportunity to connect with other people who have similar crazy stories. Thanks for making me laugh, Karen and Bonnie. Uh, Aww. Her name's Karen and Bonnie? Um, I know. That, that's I mean, that's great. the thing. Like, they would hold you to a point if it was like, hey, uh, you know, there would be these things like we're all going to speak in tongues. And they would just, like, hold people there forever until everyone Man-dating? was doing it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Two hours. Seriously. Oh, my God. Well, I think the older I get, too, I'm like, two hours of uninterrupted prayer? Dear. Something. There's just so much you could do with two hours. Those fingers better grow after all that time. <laughs> Thank you. Send in your funny stories at deconversiontherapypodcast.com. And go check out our merch. I just got some... Um, I'm going to wear some. I'm going to drink from other products. And Ooh. I love the one that is, I spent my tithe on this. You can put that yeah. on your laptop as a sticker. Or I went to church and all I got was this uh, religious trauma. I think I'm going to wear that to lunch here in my religious neighborhood. It's going to go over well. Yeah, I think it would. Bring a Smurf with you. <laughs> That's charred. That I, I found these Smurfs one day. I'm just walking along. I just think that the saddest little bit of that letter was Smurfs were a big deal. I know. Because <laughs> they were. Have All a right. good well, day. Thanks, guys. Don't be a shit pile.